In this video, we are going to be talking about transgenic animals, but before we start, there are some key terms you need to know. A genome is an organism's complete set of DNA, including all of its genes. Microinjection is when a glass micropipette is used to inject a substance at a microscopic level. Copulation is another word for sexual intercourse. Pseudopregnant is the appearance of symptoms associated with pregnancy when the organism is not actually pregnant. This is also known as a false pregnancy. Stem cells are undifferentiated cells that are capable of giving rise to indefinitely more cells. And finally, transgenic is an organism whose genome has been altered by the transfer of a gene from another species. This includes transgenic plants and organs. However, in this video, we are only addressing transgenic animals. From the definition of transgenic, you can guess that transgenic animals are animals that have foreign genes deliberately inserted into their genome, which can come from the genes of another animal. For example, this picture shows two transgenic mice which have been genetically modified so that they carry a green fluorescent protein which glows under blue light. Let's begin to discuss how transgenically modified animals are made. There are two ways in which this could be done. The first method starts with the microinjection of the desired DNA into the fertilized cell of the soon-to-be transgenic animal. The eggs get implanted into the ovaries of a pseudo-pregnant surrogate mother who is of the same species as the transgenic animal. The genetically modified offspring is born and cupulates with other transgenic animals to create a transgenic line. This diagram clearly shows, labels, and summarizes the process. The gene of choice gets modified in a lab and is then injected into the egg of an animal, which gets implanted in a surrogate mother. In the second method, the DNA gets inserted into an embryonic stem cell, which is then micro-injected into an embryo, which has been developing for four to five days after fertilization. Now, many of you must be wondering, what is the point of all of this? Why do we have transgenic animals, or what do we use them for? Well, their sole purpose is to help research human diseases and treatments to diseases. They, specifically mice, have been genetically modified to produce human antibodies for therapeutics. In fact, 7 out of 11 monoclonal antibody drugs were produced by transgenic mice. In addition, transgenic farm animals have been looked at as a way to produce complex human proteins. They can also provide nutritional supplements and pharmaceuticals such as growth hormone and insulin. And finally, they can help understand how genes function in relation to diseases. Most recently, the process of creating transgenic animals has been used to create human-pig hybrids. This was done so that these pigs could donate the human organs growing in them to people in need. The picture shows the embryo of a human-pig hybrid. To summarize how transgenic animals are used to help humans, mice, fruit flies, and roundworms are used to study human diseases. Dairy-producing animals such as goats are used to produce protein products that include human growth hormones and anti-clotting factors. And finally, pigs are being used as organ donors. Even so, with the benefits provided by transgenic animals, people wonder if it is ethical to create animals solely for the purpose of harvesting their organs. Additionally, there is also a possibility of transferring diseases to humans. While we are still on the topic of pigs, let's discuss micropigs. As the name goes, they are genetically modified pigs who have been made smaller to serve as pets. Enzymes known as talons, which stand for transcription activator-like effector nucleases, were used to disable one of their two growth hormone genes. Talons gets inserted into a male fetal cell and after that male is born, he is bred with a normal female so that half of their offspring could be micropigs. This is another concern for ethics because of how that that lack of one growth hormone could affect them. It could stunt the growth of vital organs in their bodies. When I thought about the topic of transgenic animals and whether I am for it or against it, I felt the need to make a pros and cons list of my own because transgenic animals could help provide organs to those in need and help further develop the study of human diseases, but at the same time, we are throwing away the lives of these precious animals, not to mention that we could become prone to animal diseases. If we think about it, humans are the only animals that have access to technology and with it, they feel that they can accomplish many things, which is true. Technology has helped us develop medicine and cure so many diseases. However, if you look at it in the perspective of other animals, it may seem that humans have a rise in their ego because of the power that technology entails them. This can lead to feelings of superiority over other animals and that can lead to abuse of other animals. In previous slides, I have mentioned micropigs and the sole purpose that they were created so that humans could use them as pets. This demonstrates the superiority humans feel because they think that all the other animals in the world are for their benefit. I personally am against the idea of micropigs because I see no purpose for it. What is the difference from having a micropig as a pet than a normal pig besides the fact that some may find micropigs to be cuter? But again, that is my own opinion. 
With that being said, I am for transgenic animals under two simple conditions. For one, the animals aren't abused during their lifetime or treated as objects because people can get so wrapped up in what these animals could provide for our race that they seem to forget sometimes that they are living, breathing creatures who have feelings. My second condition is that if transgenically modified animals are going to be tested, it should be for health care. Created using Powtoon.